Why, no, your eyes do not deceive you. We are back in Riverbend Discovery Center. Welcome back, guys. If you guys are just tuning into the series for the first time, Riverbend Discovery Center is... it's very different. Um, It's supposed to be a very clean, kind of modern, but still low-budget zoo. And it takes into account a lot of practices that a lot of, well, low-budget zoos really tend to do. Uh, a lot of this kind of centers around the fact that they have rides, the fact that they kind of have, like, these animal interactions, just general ways for zoos to kind of make up some money. And one of the most common ways that you see this is with kangaroo walkabouts. And, of course, I didn't really have enough space to put kangaroos in here. And wallabies are honestly a very cheap alternative. So these guys are very small. Uh, one of the kinds that we have in here are Bennett's wallabies, and we actually do have an albino one here. I really want to get an albino wallaby in here because we have one over at Southwick's, which is kind of the same vibe that I'm going for. Obviously, just a little bit more put together than Southwick's if you guys have ever been there. Because guess what? We actually do have real pathing in this zoo. <laughs> now, one of the things I did want to do was kind of accentuate, like, kind of the theming that we have from before, but also incorporating a few more elements of, I guess, quote-unquote Australian theming. Nothing really too crazy. Uh, obviously, over here, we're working on the holding building for these guys. I really wanted to make this nice and spacious for them. Hopefully we can fit some like staff rooms in here. Obviously I'm not really doing any interiors as you guys know because interiors frighten me half to death. But I still like building buildings kind of like that. Just making sure that we have these nice focal points that always bring our eyes back towards. So if you guys can't tell, we're using a lot of the same theming that we have going on throughout the entire zoo, be it with our fences, be it with our buildings. It's just a generally good way to kind of keep up with, you know, various ideas that we're trying to lay out, various concepts, and make the zoo feel a lot more cohesive as a whole. Obviously, we're not really trying to do separate areas. We're really just building whatever we can build, because when it comes to a lot of areas like this, it more so centers around around the collection rather than putting that collection into separate themes and sub collections if that makes sense i know i'm kind of going off on like a little tangent over here but it's totally fine so one of the things i did want to have was this kind of airlock system i didn't <laughs> i didn't make it to scale at first so we do end up correcting that later down the line but this is kind of what you would see when it comes to walkabout areas and we actually do start building one uh, well, I start building one right after this episode ends, so we do have another episode of Riverbend coming up. Rest assured, Riverbend fans, we are not done with the series just yet. I'm still very excited to take this on going forward, but one of the things I did want to do over here was make this airlock system using the same kind of themes and pieces that we've been using for the time being, and just making like, you know, just a nice little hut if that makes sense, using our thatch to make sure it looks nice. We also double that up on each other, so it does have this nice coherent theme with it. Uh, I guess a flow would make better use of that wordage, I don't really know. But we essentially just bump that up so we could walk through it. I'm using the better first person mod to instantly boot myself down onto first person level and walk through it, make sure it all fits nice and well. If you guys are afraid of modding, Listen, I know, I know a lot of qualms come with modding, but the first person mod, it's a necessity even if you don't like mods. It will not break your game, it just makes it so that you don't have to type in Tejidcam every 5 seconds, you can instantly go down there and it's perfect. But, moving on through here, we do need to separate the wallabies from the actual fence itself. And wallabies tend to not really go on rocks like this, especially Bennett's wallabies, which are more of a plains kind of wallaby. More of like, you know, your yellow-footed rock wallabies would tend to find themselves more in cliff sides. Meanwhile, Bennett's kind of find themselves in this kind of area, like nice plains, and they would hesitate to go on rocks kind of like that. We're using some of Lion Signs as always, just really keep that cohesive theme within the whole park, and we're also decorating this with a lot of foliage. We do a lot of fun stuff with the decals later on, so definitely do keep your eyes peeled for that. I'll be sure to mention it because I am so happy with how well that technique came out. 
but essentially just making this entire area perfect for our little wallaby friends because I love them so much. I really have fallen in love with a lot of Australian wildlife ever since I've started playing Planet Zoo and modding it in particular. I just really love making all these wonderful species be represented in a lot better ways so it's just really fun to take all that on. Uh, and I don't know, it's just been such a long time since I've built like this, because as you guys can probably tell, I've been head over heels with Hope Island Zoo, which I do hope a lot of you guys are enjoying that series, it is really fun to do. But one of the things I really did want to get back into was Riverbend, I really wanted to make a nice clean zoo. And, you know, it's just really awesome to have separate projects happening at once. Uh, just, it's so nice to just be able to bounce in between stuff. And you guys always be there to support it. It's always awesome to have, like, all you guys watching these videos. Um, I don't know, it's just really fun just to get back into all this groove. I don't know, it's always so fun. But as you guys can see, we're still hammering away on the foliage. I'm using the mix of the periwinkle leaves just because they make for great great ground cover and here we go with the decals so I really wanted to make sure that this path kind of blended in so one of the things I do try and do I color match those moss decals to fit in with the mulch path over there and we kind of make it feel so that it's a lot more trotted on the original mulch path I know it doesn't look like much in the speed build right now because even I'm looking at the same speed build that you guys are looking at and it doesn't look like much but once we do get that color variation in there it looks so much more dirty it looks so much more better it looks so much better afterwards i don't know and we try and incorporate some other decals in it and we do some on the exterior as well of the path just so it blends in a little bit more and we kind of dirty up the exhibit a little bit we use some of bz's uh logs over here and we also throw in some nice little other logs as well just to make sure it feels all nice and cohesive we add one of haribo's feeders so that you know you could have your guests feed the wallabies and whatnot that's a really awesome thing to have in a zoo like this it's a really nice cheap way to get them some food as well as a nice cheap way to make some money uh, using Tove's walls over there. I do have a door that leads right into a bush. I should probably fix that. I'm just seeing that right now. And we also use some of Leader's feeders. <laughs> Get it? Uh, we use some of Leader's feeders right over there as well, just to make sure that our wallabies are fed. And we're just making sure that we flow through our zoo, trying to, like, you know, get a better view of everything else and how it all flows. But look at that. We are finally in the cinematics. I really do love how well this came out. It was a really fun way to get back into this project. Um, I don't know, I just really do love this project so much. I really hope you guys are enjoying it as well. I know I kind of started that North America area. I do want to get back to that eventually just because it was really fun to start on. Hey, check out how Frontier messed up these lods coming up, ready? Are you guys ready? Because I'm not, because I hate these. Look at that! Look, it just goes right through the door. I did not make that intentionally. That is something that happens when you're far away from it, but hey, what can I do? Uh, moving on through here, we can see our wallabies and whatnot, but that's pretty much it. Uh, hope you guys are excited for what else comes through from Riverbend. I have a lot of really fun stuff planned. Nothing really too crazy. I think all of our big stuff is pretty much done. So it's just getting the smaller stuff. Maybe we'll even work on an entrance. It would be pretty funny to have an entrance be our last episode. That'd be really fun. But hey, moving on through all of this. It was a really fun project to do. Um, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the cinematics. And enjoy the little albino wallaby coming up. But all that being said, I must adjourn from here. Have a wonderful day, guys. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next episode of Riverbend. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.